Hello, um, it's Eric. It's probably still windy, so sorry about that again. Um, hey, this is about uh, making roads. I made a really long like video earlier today, and I was thinking about all the things I missed because at the same time that I didn't put as many things in there as I should have, it also was too long. So, you know, go me. Uh, so, a couple things I was thinking as I was doing this, I was like, what are other things that would have been handy for somebody to know who's like building a road in the middle of nowhere? Uh, one of the things that I was thinking is, is that you want to make it pretty wide. So like the, I think a lane, like a traffic lane is uh, 10 feet wide, right? So initially I had this idea of like a 10 foot wide road, but it doesn't really work because um, a lot of things like construction equipment, um, if you want like a well drilling crew to come in, they're going to need a thing, something that's a lot larger than 10 feet. Um, and also uh, you need to be able to make turns. So Maybe it could be 10 feet if it was just, you know, 100%, um, you know, perfectly straight. But when you make turns, um, you need it a little wider. And then if you have a trailer, you need it to be even wider, right? So uh, I don't know of any section of road that I've made where I've said, you know what, I really wish I had made that skinnier. Um, for the most part, you want it to be about as wide as you can. Uh, like 20 feet would probably be about right if you could do it. Um, maybe you don't road base the whole thing, but you know, it's still probably a pretty good idea. Uh, 12 feet, you know, it's about as small as I'd go. 16 is a little more realistic. So like to me, like 16 feet. And then if you can have patches that are 20 feet wide, that's pretty good because then with that, you can like park something on the side and then have another vehicle go past it. Right. So if you have a dump trailer, you could park it on the side and then do something on one side and put a dump trailer, stuff like that. And when it gets skinnier, you just can't, you can't even get a wheelbarrow through. Right. If it's like if you have 10 feet of road and you have a truck parked in the middle, you you know, even like walking past, it's kind of rough. It's kind of a little, little sketch. So um, make it as wide as you can. And then the other part, too, is that uh, like the soil and I'm going to I keep pointing to stuff, but it doesn't work. So anyway, where the soil is like these rocks, well, those rocks are kind of a bad example. But like this rock right here, right, like this rock probably isn't even that big, to be honest. Um, the one that I'm kicking. It's probably, yeah, like you, you hit it and you can see like the other things moving around. So it's really not that big, but what it has is that it's, it's set in, right? Like it's, um, uh, all the, you know, all the, the, the weight, the gravity, time, moisture, over time, all of that has, has really locked that thing in place, which if you get into earthen building, that's what earthen building is, right? Is you're trying to get all the little granules and um, geometric shapes lock against each other to make this really strong um, material and that's what this at least this I don't know what your soil is like but that's what my soil is like it's it's all locked together so um, what you're really doing and then this is area like from the last video that I showed you um, here's you can see it this is now stuff that my backhoe has um, has done okay and um, so I'll kind of show you again. So there it is, and you can see the backhoe sitting there. Um, so what, you're, what I try to do is I try to basically break everything up, right? Rake it with the backhoe, um, get the big rocks out with the backhoe, the ones that'll hurt your back. Um, uh, anything kind of bigger than a toaster oven, and then anything you know kind of bigger than a football, um, you want to get those, throw them in the loader, and then get them out somewhere that you've determined is the best place to put rocks like that. Um, and then from there, like I back drag a little bit, um, it, it kind of works, but honestly, the biggest thing that works for me is just going back and forth a whole bunch with the, uh, um, with the, the tires on the tractor, um, and that, and you can see it, you can probably hopefully see it, we'll kind of get out of the sun, but hopefully you can see it. It's just the tractor basically, right? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to, to do what time did, just accelerate it, right? We're trying to compact that soil back down again um and and make it that like instead of it being with those rocks up there we want the rocks to be a little bit below the surface and um, we want to make it more level um, and rip out the sagebrush obviously but we're trying to like kind of redo what was already there right so um get that stuff out and then start smacking it down start driving over it a bunch and then it like starts to like compact down um and and the the soil and the rocks and all that stuff begins to reset um, to what it was before, except now you don't have a bunch of rocks sticking up. So 
that's it. That was the other one. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, so yeah, back dragging is fine, but like it's it's kind of hard um, on your gear. It's not. I mean, it's notoriously like a, a mangler of hydraulics. Um, so there's ways of doing it where you basically don't like if the bucket's like that. That's the bucket. Um, a lot of people back drag like this, so it's that bottom edge of the the bucket is the one like <laughs> scraping. But when you do that, you extend out the hydraulics, so it's um, it's really easy to uh, to just break a tube. So, um, so we don't want to do that. Um, that would be bad. So yeah. Um, I think that's about it. I think that's the only thing I'm sure I missed something else and then I'll make like a third one of these. Yeah. Um, so good luck. Uh, good luck. Have fun. You don't need to like or subscribe. Just have fun out there and do good stuff. All right. Bye.